the cloud industry consumes more power and has a bigger carbon footprint than the aviation industry. As a society, we are naturally hoarders. 30% of their cloud bill is wastage. Welcome to The Big Question, the series from Euronews where we speak to some of the brightest minds in industry to address the key topics on the business agenda. Today, we're speaking to Matt Harris, a Senior Vice President and Managing Director at Hewlett-Packard Enterprise. I want to talk to you today about the cloud. It's something that we all knowingly and maybe sometimes unknowingly use every day. So to start us off broadly, can you estimate in Europe, we'll say, how much money companies are wasting by misusing the cloud? Well, that's a really difficult one to quantify, Hannah. Um, I think if you look at some of the stats that are out there, we predict in 2024 that cloud spending will surpass the trillion dollar mark in Europe. Okay. I think, again, depending on the reports you look at, um, per annum, customers and enterprises are spending anywhere between 150 to $200 billion a year. How much is wastage? Again, very difficult. Some reports would say we've got customers who say that 30% of their cloud bill is wastage or they don't know what it's used for. And even if we're half right on that, it is a sizable and significant number. Why or how is the cloud being misused? And you know, what are the co common misconceptions around, around it? Well, I think in enterprises and businesses, we have for the last decade been living in this cloud first policy. Conventional wisdom will say that the cloud is outsourcing a lot of your IT obligations of, of running your enterprise or storing your information. So if you think about it from your phone, you know, a lot of the pictures that you have on your phone are backed up into the cloud. Yeah. What does that mean? That means that they are stored on someone else's hard drive, but you still have the ability to get those back. But they also come with a cost because they will fundamentally sit on large bits of technology managed by someone else. The cloud undoubtedly gave a huge amount of business benefit in terms of how organizations brought new products to market in a digitized route much more quickly. But some of those kind of abundance of an ease of consumption of cloud also had a lot of drawbacks as well, which are only now really being understood by customers. You know, there is still a huge cost associated with it. There is a sustainability aspect to it because all of those IT assets are very intensive in terms of the energy that they consume. You know, I think some people have discussed kind of the rising costs of the cloud. How much have costs risen, say, in the past two years and, and what has contributed to that, that rising cost? Well, I think a few things there. Um, I don't meet any enterprise who hasn't encountered what we call bill shock, where they get to the end of the month or a period, they see their cloud bill and think, that is far bigger than I had anticipated. And I think it comes to a little bit of human behaviour. When you've got an abundance of resource, when you can't see it, when it's not within your control to manage that, and it's really easy to consume, your consumers use it and use it and use it more. And therefore, we have seen spiralling costs. If I go back to a personal example, you know, it is probably every four or five months from my um, a telephone provider that says, do you want to increase your storage capacity because you still aren't deleting photos, Matt? And that's not what I thought the cost was going to be at the start. The reality is, if you do that at super scale as a business, over a long period of time, it has created enormous bill. So further to that point, um, how can businesses save money for, on their cloud usage? I mean, as a society, we are naturally hoarders. You know, we, we yeah. like to we have comfort in keeping things. It gives us a degree of safety. The reality around that, if you think about um, data and, and, and what as businesses, as consumers, we're storing, do you need 32 copies of something which is not necessarily hugely valuable? We have, uh, you know, historically kept um, things for tens of years, decades, you know, 50 years. And, and the reality is, does that information require us to continue to hold it? So what we fundamentally see is um, with our hoarding nature that we aren't deleting anything. We aren't necessarily in control of that. We think it's a really good time for every organization to reevaluate their cloud strategy 
and start with the end state and goal. Start with what have we learned through the period of the last decade? What do we believe our IT spend and requirements are going to be for the next decade, particularly with things like artificial intelligence? And where is the best location to invest in technology that supports our business? It's making sure, particularly around data management and storage, we are taking cost out of things and not storing them uh, and evaluating with a much more conscientious approach what a future strategy should be. You know, you were saying about how we need to be more conscientious um, about what we store. We can't keep every single, uh, we can't keep the thousands of holiday photos that we all take. Um, if we don't do, or on a business level, we can't keep every little document, every email, you know, we need to be better with our data. If we don't do something about managing our data and what we store, how will that amass and, and what will be the consequence? The cloud industry consumes more power and has a bigger carbon footprint than the aviation industry. That's today. Tomorrow, it's going to be even bigger than that as our thirst for quicker, faster, more information uh, grows and grows. The reality is if you are not storing data locally, there's this kind of out of sight, out of mind mantra that we have as human beings. And by doing that, we can rely on cloud providers to try and reduce data and minimize our cost or wanting to store things. But let's be really frank, that's not how they monetize their business. So they are therefore not necessarily motivated to do that. So what do we need to do? We need to be very aware of that. We need to think about the decisions longer term to the planet, not just how our businesses perform on every IT decision we make. Because if you fast forward 10 years from now, again, the role IT will have on society, on business, on consumer will only get greater. And therefore, we all play a pivotal part in terms of the impact of that to our futures and the future generations of people we have on this planet. AI, as an example, the way that AI works is even hungrier than our classic data storage and enterprise workloads that sit on clouds today. And in fact, if you ran AI workloads into our classic cloud models we have today, they'd be wildly inefficient. So if we're not conscious and conscientious of how we build, how we consume, what we delete, the output of those, then we are gonna to get to some astronomical wastage figures, which is really scary for all of us. To that kind of sustainability angle, do you think businesses, if they don't do something about their um, cloud store, uh, their data storage, do you think they can really achieve um, environmental targets? I think candidly, no. I think going back to some of the contribution that IT and the cloud have on our carbon emissions and our footprint we leave on the planet, without getting control of that, we will not be able to deliver against our sustainability targets the problem is only getting bigger and worse, not better. And those that are not taking action now are not rethinking with a much more conscientious approach and reviewing all elements of a strategy are going to be the ones that, um, that either don't deliver or actually from a business perspective get left behind. So the cloud has changed the way we work. And now obviously AI is kind of the hot topic and is really gonna change our lives going forward. Um, you know, we've established that the way the cloud works and how it's used is, is very misunderstood. What can we learn from our misunderstanding of the cloud um, so that we don't make mistakes with AI going forward? I mean, AI has burst into our lives. The reality of it is AI is a very compute and storage intensive, what we call workload and therefore will have a huge draw of power to drive forward, which has a huge impact to the carbon tons that you know, will be emitted. We have to be considered and conscientious about how we get the benefits of AI, but really understand the drawbacks to the future of our planet. I think what we can't afford to do is follow that abundance mentality that carefree attitude of I will just consume as much as I can because I'm in a race to get this new thing to market.
because if we had done that, if we kind of rewind the clock and say AI was the thing 10 years ago and not the cloud, the scale of the problem we'd have now around cost, the impact to the planet, how control of in the future would be, you know, huge, huge times, you know, much more scarier for what we'd be trying to work out in the future. So I think something that is on a lot of people's minds when they think about the cloud is, is our data safe in the cloud? Um, you know, for example, is it easier to hack in or to access data that's stored in the cloud over data that would be, say, stored on premises on a hard drive? That's almost an impossible question to, to answer. What I would say is regardless of where your data resides, if you're in control of it in your own data center, where you kind of outsource where that resides into, into a public cloud, it is still your obligation and responsibility to secure it. And it's therefore not out of sight and out of mind. We see in the press all the time an increase in ransomware, cybersecurity attacks and threats. That is only going to consider, con uh, continue over time. What we would encourage organizations to do is understand that regardless of their decision around their cloud strategy or where their data resides, that they are obligated and still need to make sure they're going through the appropriate protocols to ensure that is safe, uh, to ensure that um, they have the right remediation strategies to prevent those sorts of attacks. And thinking kind of about, um, you know, if there was a disruption, what would be the consequences, um, hypothetically, if the cloud went down for a day within Europe? What would be the consequences for business? I mean, hard to quantify. I think reality is cloud is pervasive and part of all of our lives. And even if you're an organization or you are a consumer is not using the cloud, you know, directly, you probably rely on a service which could be hosted in a cloud provider or that service may rely on a third party which is hosted in that provider. I think it is almost inconceivable to think about the, the chaos that that could create um, and let's all hope that doesn't happen. And so looking to the future, do you think the cloud is going to continue to be one of our uh, main storage techniques, I guess? Um, and if so, or, or if it isn't, you know, is there going to be a day where we're suddenly just cut off from, from our data that's stored there? Yeah, the cloud will be here forever. I think what will change is the definition of it. I think we will see the cloud move from this kind of looking to the sky vaporware to a much more well-understood this is a methodology that I need to deploy regardless of where my data resides. And we will need a cloud approach to that, which is you know, operating very efficiently, only paying for what you use, only storing what you really need. And we have to have that approach anywhere. So I think the definition changes rather than we see a shift because the cloud is here to stay for all of us. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for joining us on The Big Question.